this week just obliterated me. I don't know where it went. I spent like 13 hours this week just editing the videos. So like it was five minute video and a 10 minute video. 13 hours of editing because I just, I wanted to add more flair to it, I guess. I'm really curious to know if it's making any kind of a difference. It kind of goes against what I originally wanted to do, which was to reduce the amount of time I'm spending on something that doesn't grow instead of trying something new. I like recognizing you guys when you comment on my stuff and having like snippets of conversation. Like that's the stuff that I like. So it's kind of weird to dabble in that mindset of people who are doing it for like exponential growth and stuff. So I've just been like trying to learn how to do better sound editing and visual stuff. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, just, it's a it's a process that takes a long time. And now it's Friday and I've done nothing in terms of art stuff really. Good news is that I sold the last tiny painting in that tiny show, so I don't have to go back and pick it up. And I'm wondering if I should be making more of those. <laughs> Just because they're obviously connecting to people in some way. Not because I want to put them in my shop and sell them, but because that's the whole purpose of making art is to connect with people. So one thing I did was I bound this sketchbook that I've been putting off forever and I've been using the papers unbound. I did this in a rush last night while I was caffeinated and uh, I bound it upside down. <laughs> so I have to fix this. I don't want to. I need more sleep I think. I did, however, get rid of this giant pile of papers in this box where I throw all of my scrap crap paper because I was making more paper packs. When I was at the flea market, I sometimes had um, $5 ephemera packs. So a lot of it is like nice wrappers if I had any Project Life type thingies. What do you call this stuff? <laughs> scrapbooking details, misprints, because my printer sucks, so sometimes I have things that I accidentally printed sideways or whatever, loose stickers, some of these wood pieces. I love wood pieces so much, but I never actually use them for anything, and I'm very happy to pass them on. There's sometimes there's things that I really wish that I would use, but I don't do scrapbooking, and I don't particularly like the bulk that they add to the books, but they're very cool and I, I do like them, but to jazz up the paper packs, I'm willing to put some in there. There's a, looks like a Chinese New Year note in there. I love those. I never listed them online because parcel shipping is so much. It would be good as an add-on, like if you were buying a sketchbook or something and just wanted to add on a $5 pack, I don't think it would add too much weight. It would add some weight. There's a Muji bag in here. A failed Echo Print. Um, I used to really like using the split corrugated cardboard in art journaling because it looks cool. Some prints that I ended up not using for stuff, like a mini zine. I have a pile. Ah, they're all dry now. I was going to try eco printing again because the first one didn't work. I don't know if I've included footage where I talked about cameras and stuff and I thought that um, getting a new camera wouldn't really help that much because I think it's all editing. They say that video quality isn't as important as sound quality so you can kind of get away with stuff. But the thing is I think because we're entering dark time <laughs> daylight is not that great. I struggle a lot with taking photos of my art 
I keep thinking that this light is bright enough because it does look very much like a daylight window situation here. If I watch my videos outdoors even, the footage quality actually is surprisingly bad and I don't know why that is. It's very grainy even in daylight, which is bizarre to me. So I bought a camera and I couldn't decide if I wanted to get the G7X that every art vlogger has because it looks kind of dreamy in a certain setting and it's sharp and it does a low light and it's just a point and shoot so I can carry it around. Like I liked the M50 footage a lot but it is more like carrying one of these around everywhere but and I didn't want to do that. And to get the really dreamy footage on the M50 you have to buy separate lenses and stuff so I, and I didn't want to have to do that. So I couldn't decide between that and the SX, H, S, X, some numbers, because that one has 40 times optical zoom, and I love my zoom. This camera is just the PowerShot ELF camera, 360. I use the zoom on this camera anytime I'm out, like not even to film things, but to use it as like a set of binoculars. So it was really hard to like decide, okay, like, okay do I want really nice quality footage in my house? Or do I want to have that zoom? Because the G7X only has four times optical zoom, which is kind of relatively useless to me. I've decided to get the G7X for the very nice footage, and then I will be that weirdo who carries two or three cameras around everywhere. <sighs> Pathetic. So. I'm really excited about it. I'm... I'm really nervous about it, actually.